Welcome to the Experience Points podcast. We're an all-queer cast, and I'm the originator and producer, Kelly. The cast consists of queer gamers with over three decades of combined gaming experience. Not that we all always act like it. I'm very excited to share with you our inaugural campaign. We're playing Starfinder, a game by Paizo. We're fortunate enough to have a professional game master, Miyu, who created a homebrew campaign for our initial outing. And we're very excited about it. This is our very first set of recordings, so you might notice some audio issues. We're working to address them very quickly. We thank you for sticking with us through these initial bumps on the road. Um, Our goal is to create a podcast that I hope you'll enjoy as much as we're enjoying making it. So please just sit back, relax, and enjoy our first episode. The title of which is making fun of one of my slips of the tongue, Squirrel Friends. So, as you all know, you have all been stranded on an asteroid in the diaspora in the small mining colony of Andoran Stand due to the android Gideon. So, Kira, what do you do? What, what, you're, you're stuck here. What have you been doing? What would well, your average day look like? I think that I would just sit quietly for... <laughs> A very, very long time. And pray to Desna. All right. <laughs> and what about uh, what about you, Phaedra? What what's it what's an average day look like for you stuck in this backwater mining town? Um uh, Phaedra would be roaming around town, basically trying to help out whoever um seems to be maybe like mentally unstable um phaedra is a field psychologist that specializes in ptsd so she's searching around i mean this is what she came here to do gideon tricked her with promise of money and there's people to help here and but there's there is people to help but now there's no money so I just do what, do what I'm here to do. All right, so Absco. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are, what, are you, what are you doing? Absco is definitely trying to cultivate resources. Um, they, they realize that um, they're stranded. Um, they don't really have contact back um, on Absalom Station or on Versus, do they? Yeah. No. Uh, in fact, you are you have basically planetary communication right into just outside of the planet uh mm-hmm. like ships in low orbit that's about it yeah um definitely like to start out with um absco would definitely send like many strongly worded messages to gideon <laughs> <laughs> all right and what about angus oh angus is going to be making the best of his situation and he's an engineer this this is a, a small asteroid, but engineers, I'm pretty sure, are going to be in high demand. So he would be finding work somewhere to uh, save up and also to see if there's a way, you know, scheming to see if there's a way to get his ship back. All right. So, Kira, you're sitting there, you're praying, waiting for something to happen. When your little communication device just beep, 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 beep. Oh, my God. Um, I run over to it because I'm pretty sure it's away from me. Okay. <laughs> and I pick it up and see who it is. There is a message on there that says, I know what Gideon has done to you. Meet me at this or come to the space bar if you want revenge or answers. I head to the space bar. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Absco. You're checking around, trying to get something, get some sort of resources going when your communicator, beep, 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 beep. I, I hop on it. I, I look at it. Yep. Um, you also and... have the exact same message. All right. Um, Come to the space bar. I know what Gideon did to you. Come to the space bar if you want revenge. Finally. 
And so Phaedra, yeah, you're, you're going around, you're trying to find people to help, uh, you know, it, it's a mining town, bunch of miners who don't like to admit that they might have some, some mental issues. Uh, I, I feel like you're probably in like this really like trying to convince someone that they need some help right now <laughs> when your communicator goes off. Beep, 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 beep. Um, I look at it. I'm assuming it's the yours, same Yours. Oh. Yours Fancy. has a message that says, I know what Gideon did to you. Come to the space bar if you want revenge. <laughs> <laughs> and then, go ahead. Is there is there any way to reply to it? Is there like, does it say who no it's reply from? Link. You're not even you're not even sure how that where this message came from. Nothing. This is kind of odd. No one no one really has. I mean, you've given out your communication frequency to people. I'm sure, like you would give out your card or your phone number. But uh, yeah, this this didn't come through like a, whatever would be like a messaging app or anything. This just popped up on there. Can you roll sense motive on the message? <laughs> <laughs> it meant to be delivered. You, can, you, you know what? <laughs> you can roll sense motive. You can Absco, if you want to roll sense motive, roll sense motive on that. Let's. I, I want to see how you're feeling about this message. I it's think he's okay. Odd. <laughs> it's a little odd, but you know, hey, someone's offering you revenge against Gideon, so. We'll yep. take that at face value, right? I, I think in a lot of them, like, shrug. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right. And then Angus. Uh, yeah, you're you're actually talking to uh, a foreman for one of the mining, uh, op- or for the mining operation there, uh, about trying to get a job. When your communicator, beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Um, look at it. Same message. I look at the foreman and... You have to excuse me. I'm still trying to find Angus's voice. And I say, I have to put a pin in this. I'll be back. And then I take off for the bar because this is super important. All right. So you all arrive at the space bar. And you'll see over kind of in, in this corner over here how there's kind of those seats, you know, the booze with the hollow vids. Attached yeah. to your message is a booth number. I had right and for so it. So let's let's have you all go ahead and roll initiative. Let's see who arrives there first. Fun. All right, cool. So Absco, you're the first one to <laughs> arrive. So um, I I note the numbers on the booths. Uh, I want to do a perception check of just uh, who all is in the um, in the facility. Okay, go ahead. Oh, that is an eleven. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. I mean, you can you can see there's there's the bartender, mm-hmm. and uh, probably about a half dozen miners that are off shift. Okay. Um, I take a seat near the booth, um, but uh, not in the booth. I want to see who else shows up. All right, Angus, you're the next one to show up. I walk in the bar and um, do a perception check to see. All right. You see everything with that nat <laughs> twenty on the table. Uh, no, you see, you see, definitely. This is a little mining town bar, kind of rough and tumble. There's the uh, the bartender behind the bar, bunch of miners, kind of off duty. Um, and you see, what, what what does he see when he looks over at you, Absco? Uh, a, a very lanky, tall, very tall. Uh, person who um, who's bald and has uh, black large eyes um, and um, you know you can't really tell but uh, they they might be wearing really skin tight clothing but may not be wearing clothing at all it's very hard to tell nice so definitely not a minor though definitely not a minor and and what would absco see as you enter angus uh, you'd see a pretty large and I hate to say it when this is my character, but beefy <laughs> noir. So, <laughs> I have the jokes. <laughs> um, uh, minotaur looking creature with four horns instead of two, uh, wearing armor and with a little pink moat of energy hanging just right around their shoulder. Um, and their 
fur coloring is this white with like cream squirrels all through it and they flow all the way up around the horns uh pretty intense looking right now i'm sure you are all right so (laughs) you walk into the bar that's what you see you see all these miners and then this person that is so not a miner all right and may not even be wearing clothing (laughs) <laughs> refining <laughs> questions when i look around um do i see the booth is anyone in it and what can i tell about them okay you see the booth nobody's there okay uh in with the there's 20 perception an, the, the empty booth well well labeled there's a, a vid screen oh perfect and do i see anyone sort of watching the booth or looking at it not even not at all absco with that natural 20 is all i'm asking i think i think at the moment absco is watching you okay um definitely because uh angus do you look like a miner um i am (laughs) armored i don't think i look like a a a miner but i I don't you are probably the most interesting thing in this bar right now that's a given. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. all of this takes like a fraction of a second as I hesitate. And I look around and then I just walk right up to the booth and take a seat. All right. Kira, you're next. You arrive at the space bar. I walk in. And she looks kind of scared but she's trying to be very confident in her steps and so I'm going to make a perception check okay yeah you will hopefully we all hope (laughs) (laughs) you're 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 so freaked out at this like this is so you're so outside your your comfort zone here you see a bar you see the numbers um, it's pretty obvious that there's a big bull person sitting there. I'm going to go over and sit across from him. And right. just look at him and like blink like I'm expecting him to say something. All right. So Angus, this, yeah. this person has come in, <clears throat> sat da- just sat down across from you and is now blinking at you. I pull up my uh, comm unit and... I say, did you send this? Show, and with, with the message, obviously. I didn't send any message. I got the same one, and I pull out mine, and I show. All right. All right. We've got ourselves a mystery. And, and then Phaedra, you get to the space bar. <laughs> I'm at the space bar. You're, you're, you're the last one to arrive at the space bar. All right. Um, I walk in, and... I mean, I can obviously I know where the table is. Yes. And the booths are clearly numbered. Okay. And then I see another noir sitting there. And then you're Lashanta. And then a Lashanta sitting at the table. I'm just going to walk in and just sit down at the table. All right. So this another noir comes walking in the door and just goes straight to this table and sits down. And I look at you and I'm like, you look very familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? You might know me from Absalom Station. Uh, you're Angus, correct? Yes. How do you know me? I've seen you around on the station. I mean, it's kind of hard to miss. I get that a lot. So, are you the one who called us here? No, I got a message that said to come here, and here I am. All right. Um, is there anything to see on the screen that's at the table? Uh, the screen is just flashing the daily specials here at the bar right now. Hmm. Um, so Absco sees, like, this conglomeration of people at the table, and... Uh, makes the decision that they are not intending any harm. And, you know, there's the whole, like, communicator waving and message pointing. And, like, <laughs> you too? Um, and, you know, uh, uh, 
now or uh, or noir uh, convention. So I'm like, okay, you know, these people can probably be trusted for just a moment. And so um, I get up and casually walk my way over to the to the booth as well. So y'all are approached by this tall, lanky person who may or may not be wearing clothing. <laughs> Well, I definitely I feel have like a... that is very important to point out. Like this person may or may not be wearing clothing. I'm well, terrified. So... <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> well, so like uh, they, they definitely have a utility belt on, and like they have like modesty, like clothing on, like but everything else is Tarzan with the Batman belt. <laughs> um, That's a great one image. I'm here. <laughs> I mean, more more pant like, like their their pants not like loincloth, <laughs> <laughs> like biker shorts, like leggings. Yeah, sort <laughs> like of. Like, like it's very it's very very tight. Um, and and boots because boots. Shorts and boots always go together. Yep. Um, Texas. But Don't you know it. <laughs> um, looking at uh. At, uh uh, Absco's skin, like you can see different patterns kind of shimmer, and um, you can see that um, it kind of a, it's focused on being clo- like clothing like, um, just sectionalized. But within those sections, you see like some spinning patterns and light reflecting. That's pretty nifty. Right. That's so cool. Fancy. Uh, so uh, they, they look at you all and uh, say, I have a feeling we're all here for the same reason. Gideon. As soon as he says the name, my face just contorts with anger. I'm like, that's son of a... Well, I think I'm in good company. I think we should sit here and uh, figure out why we're here. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, I'll wait you to a seat in the booth. Uh, so I... Uh, Come over, take a seat, and um, I put my arm out to see if I can get, like, service. Oh, yeah, someone comes over. Can I help you, sir? Ma'am? Sir? Are you wearing clothes? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, and yes. And what drink specials do you have? Well, we got the Rocket Slug. And we got the coal miners brew. I'll have some club soda. (laughs) Get a little sneer. Okay. Anything else? Well, a water would be nice. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Waiter's worst nightmare. (laughs) I would like something fruity with an umbrella in it. Where the hell you think you are? A bar. Uh huh. And for you, I can I tell that like the waiter is like annoyed at this point. Uh, yeah. The the waiter's got that like oh my god tourist look on their <laughs> face. Like what the hell are you doing here? Like this is a mining town, and y'all are yeah, ordering like uh... club soda and fruity drinks with umbrellas. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, let me just, let me just get a rocket slug, and I, like, slink back a little bit, just like, oh, don't, slug. please don't spit in my drink, please don't spit in my drink. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, As so turn after a few minutes, the server comes long. back, <laughs> <laughs> they, they come back, um, you've got water, you've got, uh, water that has some bubbles in it. You've got a drink that has like half an apple shoved down. Like it looks like whiskey <laughs> with like half an apple shoved down in it. And then like a straw with a piece of paper like shoved across Amazing. the top. <laughs> and then uh, the, the rocket slug is this kind of thick looking green thing. Nope. In, in a glass. <laughs> Can I tell if it's even safe for, like, my species to drink this? Oh, that is a really good question. Uh, let's take a look here. Lights of your skills. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I, 
think you're just going to have to kind of, you can roll a medicine check. I'll let you roll a medicine check on that. Okay. Nice. Okay. <laughs> it should be compatible. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm downing it. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, it, it, it's almost like gelatin. That it all comes out in one glob and just like slides down your throat. It burns. Like, oh, pretend it's a jello shot. It. Pretend it's a jello shot. <laughs> it tastes gross. But you feel a nice little buzz, like almost immediately. You're like, oh, hey. All right, I'm cooling. <laughs> it's like jello pudding shot. I think they should rename it to the no thank you. <laughs> and that's when, from the hollow vid in the middle of your table, you hear. Well, I see you're enjoying yourself. We like, are. Punch over and like look at the the screen. It had the specials on it. I don't know what's going on with it now. Yep. This. Oops. What what I have shared that is what you see on the screen now. Okay. Um, you just see like a hooded man sitting there. You can you can tell someone has basically hijacked this this menu. Basically, become. A communication device. I tap on the screen. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was trying to read the specials. <laughs> and I'm looking at the monitor to see if there's any any way to, that anything anything I can see that might show that someone tampered with it uh, physically to be able to do this. Let's look at your engineering. Yeah, engineering will work. I'll take an engineering. 21. Uh, there is nothing physical that you can see. Do you have computers? I do. Roll computers, then. 21. This <laughs> is an impressive... This is an impressive hack. Yeah. Okay. This is a very impressive hack. Nothing has... It doesn't appear to have been physically tampered with. It appears that someone who knows exactly what they're doing has been able to hack a menu to talk to you. Damn, that's impressive. And the the heavily modulated voice comes through. Whoa, thank you. (laughs) We are here to discuss Gideon. You said something about revenge? Gideon has been a thorn in my side as well. I happen to know where he is. I sit up much straighter and lean forward. I believe it would be mutually beneficial for us to get rid of this problem. Don't you agree? Definitely. Everybody act normal. I don't want anyone to see us talking to this thing. I, I look around, like, do, do any of the other patrons kind of notice us talking at the menu? <laughs> Not particularly, no. Yeah. There, like I said, it's it's a bartender doing his thing and, and a few miners who are just so deep in their drinks and their own miserable lives that they just, it's whatever, you know? Yeah. And y'all, y'all are weird out-of-towners, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um... You know? I, I lean forward um, and I say, um, I, I'm happy that you've reached out to us, but what? who are you? You can call me Solomon. Okay, Solomon. And why should we trust you? This has nothing to do with trust. This has to do with I have information, a job, and possibly a way off this backwater rock for you. These are all things I'm interested in. Tell me more. Gideon is operating out of a small hangar, Hangar 19, at the spaceport. I can arrange for 2,000 UBP to be sent to you upon proof that he is gone. where, Where do you get your information? I have my sources. What did Gideon do to you? He has completely destroyed one of my trade deals. I need to see him obliterated. 
Uh, I want to do a sense motive. Go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I also the, want to do a with sense the modulation motive. and with the modulation and with, I mean, everything that he's got going. He's obviously hiding his identity. Sure. The Solomon guy, obviously hiding his identity, and it's very hard to pick up anything. From what you can hear, I mean, it sounds like something Gideon would do. From everything you've found about Gideon. Like, this is kind of his M.O. It makes sense to you that, yeah, he probably did. So, looking at this image, the hands look like they're human. So, it doesn't look like an android, right? No, it doesn't. Give give me a, uh, give me another computer's check there. Wah, wah, seven. Yeah. No, it, it, it looks like, it looks like a human sitting there talking to you. Okay. So... Sure. As far as I'm concerned, if it's a road to Gideon, I'm going to take it. I've gotten nowhere in a month. So. Oh, I, I agree. <clears throat> Get, oh, go ahead. Um, I'd also like to make a sense motive check. Okay. Is that that 19 on the table? Yes. Uh, you can hear through the modulation in this guy's voice, he does not like Gideon. That's about all you can pick up, but this guy is sincere about wanting Gideon gone. Like, uh, just the way he says Gideon, like, you can <laughs> hear that, that, it's the same way you guys say Gideon, <laughs> the same way y'all say Gideon, when y'all are like, Gideon. How long have we uh, all individually been on, the, been on the planet, or on the planetoid, I guess? Uh, y'all have each been here at least a month. Okay. I mean, yeah, you've been stuck here long enough to really hate Gideon. Yeah, if uh, if my leads hadn't cul uh, cultivated anything at this point, uh, I, I would definitely acquiesce. No, uh, what what you what you found through your leads, Gideon is everywhere and yet nowhere. He's like a ghost. Mm -hmm. He's he's his aftermath is all you can ever find. Someone who's been screwed over by him. But no one knows where he is. This is the first solid lead you have had on where Gideon is. How long is Gideon going to be at this hangar? He likes to move his base of operations around quite regularly. I suggest acting sooner rather than later. Well, you don't have to tell me twice. Neither. I look forward to your call telling me you are finished. And How do that we... screen goes back to specials, just boom. I pull out my communicator and the message that was sent. I try and hit reply so I can say, "How will we reach you?" to see if it gets a response. Nothing. Those cheese sticks look good. <laughs> there, there's no reply button. In fact, the message on your communicator is gone, like it never existed. Well, that was helpful and not at the same time. So, mm -hmm. are you guys in? I'm definitely in. Yeah, I got, I got nothing better to do, to be honest with you. <laughs> Completely. Alrighty. So, I'm not sure how to start this. I, I, I've not been the... I, my, my captain's gone, so I'm not really a big planner. Uh, anyone else have more experience with this than me? I've been in and out of battle my entire life. I mean, what's different? How do we start? Do we just go to Hangar 19 and we beat watch. our way in? We go, we watch, we see what's there, and then we make decisions. That's what's worked for me. Well, until Gideon. All right. I, I agree with... Uh... I'm I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I didn't you introduce never caught myself. your name. Yes, uh, my name's Absco. Phaedra, it is nice to meet you. Angus, any enemy of Gideon's, okay for me. And I'm Kira. <laughs> awesome. I that that is the best uh, <laughs> name introduction I've ever heard. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> All right, so you guys uh, want to go watch the hangar for a while then? Um, I mean, go ahead. how familiar are we with the area? I imagine that y'all spent at least a 
bit of time at the spaceport trying to see if you could find a way off of here. Mm -hmm. So you're familiar enough to know there's there's a main office, like mm -hmm. like a main area where uh, passengers would embark, disembark, you know, kind of a, a terminal. Um, you can also book charters off of there and so on and so forth. Uh, they're just rather pricey. Uh, there's a number of hangars. So, several of them are attached to the main building. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of outbuildings with private hangars. Um, you're not sure which number is which. Well, then I think our first plan of action here is to figure out which one is hangar 19. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think. Uh, uh, I, I think if we uh, go and we talk to some of uh, someone who works at the at the spaceport, maybe they can help. You know, give us some information. Um. Would I know anyone at the spaceport? Because if I'm working, if I've been doing engineering odd jobs, the spaceport seems like a logical place to have started. All right, let's see here. Do you have any kind of, uh, it's not knowledge local anymore. What is it? Culture. Uh, culture. culture. I do, but it's awful. You're a cultured minotaur. It is also untrained. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. So, I mean, you've spoken to a couple of different pilots, done a few different odd jobs, yeah. uh, but you don't know anyone regularly there, like not well enough to be able to call in anything from them. Yeah. Um, um but based on that, would I know, I mean, if I worked for them, they'd be in hangars. Are any of those hangars around Hangar 19, like Hangar 21 or something. Just give me a straight int check. Let's let's see if you can remember, if you remember seeing 19 anywhere. Int is so not my jam. <laughs> oh! And yet you roll a nat 20. <laughs> yes, in fact, you know exactly where Hangar 19 is. It's a derelict yes. rundown hangar. <laughs> um, and it didn't seem to have a whole lot of activity in it when you've been there. All right. Uh, in fact, last last you saw, there were just a couple of workers. They looked like just kind of uh, spaceport workers going in and out. Looked like maybe doing some sort of, some sort of maintenance. Other than that, the hangar appeared to be unoccupied. All right. And that was a couple weeks ago. But you do know where it is, and you know how to get to the hangar. All right. Um, I pass all of this information on to everybody. So Absco would want to do um, a culture check uh, just to okay. see if they recall um, trying to cultivate one of uh, the workers there as a resource. Okay. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you've actually Absco with that. Absco's uh, spent some time trying to cultivate resources there. Maybe didn't you know nothing really struck you immediately as useful. Mm. But you're on fairly decent terms with uh, the lady at the front desk. Okay. Um, yeah, that was a nine. Okay, cool. Uh, plus five. Yep. Yep, plus five, being a 14. Cool. So, um, and so I relay that. I'm like, uh, I, I have some rapport with uh, the, the help desk. So I look to Phaedra and Absco to... <laughs> I'm like, well, this is your jam so why don't we why don't you tell us what to do so we we know where hangar 19 is mm -hmm. um are we anywhere near it at the moment or are we like heading there well what i would like to know is do i just take you to the front of hangar 19 or are we gonna go somewhere else so we can spy what is the plan i this is not my jam you guys need to give me some direction here I would so, prefer that we don't go busting down their front door. Okay. Uh, what you know of the hangars in that area, they are elevated hangars. So to get in through the main big like door that the that a ship would come in would require quite a bit of climbing. Um, or there is the hallway uh, that runs through and 
the building that hangar 19 is in, it's one of three hangars. You also know that a lot of these hangars tend to have storage spaces or offices or things like that attached to them. Okay. If I go to the hallway, like, can I make a perception check on the hallway? Like, itself, yes. see, like, if you this, like, maybe there's can. somebody guarding the door or... Yep, you can totally make a perception check like that. on the hallway. This is the hallway. Okay, so we made our way to the hangar area or the complex. Does anyone see sounds, the hallway? Sounds like at least sounds like at least Phaedra did it. So at least at least Phaedra has gone ahead and is checking out the hallway. Okay. Um, uh, uh, does everyone go with her, or does everyone go with Phaedra, or is it just Phaedra there while y'all are doing something else? No, I mean, if, if we're doing this together, um, Absco would go with. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah I, they don't want to miss their chance to get out of here. Okay. No, you guys get yeah. to the spaceport, and security around here is pretty lax. Like, it, it's just this little rinky-dink spaceport, you know? Cool. So, and, and each of the individuals are responsible for their own security. So... Yeah, when you get to the hallway, it's just a long hallway. You can see that there is a door here marked 19. That's it. There is, there doesn't seem to be any uh, activity in the hallway. So, um, can I hear anything on the other side of the hallway? Or on the other side of the door, sorry. Uh, give me a perception check. Six. No. No, you do not. Uh, you, all, all the hums and so on are just too much. Okay. Um, yeah, Absco would also be investigating or uh, doing a perception check as well. Okay. So that's a 11 plus 4. It's a 15. All right. Absco, you hear in the hallway beyond or, or beyond the door a hum a hum which tells you that there is it, it's the hum of a space engine of, mm. of, a, of a ship engine in there of thrusters uh, do, um do i recognize like if it's a powering up sound or if it's a sounds um... as though it is like idling, powered up and and idling, but uh, it, in takeoff sequence. Everyone, I think we need to act quickly. I hear an engine fired up, ready to go. Just say All the right. word. <clears throat> I'm sure me and Angus can break down this door. Uh, where is the door in relation to us? I don't see it on the map. Door is right there. I have marked it with an arrow. Here, I can do this for you. Kind of. Oh, I nope, see it. Nope, nope, nope. Don't do that. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to start moving closer. I'd like to do a perception do check to see if there's any sort of trap that I'm it's sort of, I don't know if that'd be an engineering okay. check or what. So Phaedra and Absco have both checked out the door. Uh, it would be a perception check. All right. Uh, unless you're, unless you're checking the door, like you said, I mean, you could, you could make an argument for an engineering check if you want. Yeah, I mean, what I'm looking for is any sort of cameras or anything that would indicate that they know we're coming. Okay. All right, go ahead and make that check. All right. Woo. A nine. <laughs> a nine. You you see nothing. You, there there is a door. Fair enough. Well, I tried. Um, is there like an opening mechanism on the door? Yes, there is. Uh, I'm going to try that first. And with a big hiss, the door opens up. Oh, that was quick. And <laughs> I know, right? It was that easy. Push the and button. here's what you button. see. A der kind of, well, a ship that's in the middle of being stripped down by a bunch of goblins with huh. an Isoki kind of standing over them. You also see, as you open the door, you see a, uh, a shuttle leaving. 
Nice. It's a fairly nice shuttle. In fact, APSCO, you recognize it as something that is commonly used as a corporate shuttle. Mm. What you find interesting is normally corporate shuttles would have their big corporate logo on the side. Sure. This has no markings. Okay. Mm. No markings at all. But with the hiss of the doors, yes, you see the place open up in front of you, and there are all the goblins. Um, fortunately, though, it seems that with the ship taking off, no one has quite noticed you just yet. So please roll initiatives, first of all. Wait. All right. Everyone got their initiatives in. And so it looks like you guys get a bit of a surprise round here. Absco. Um, all right. I am going to try to move stealthily. Okay. <laughs> possible. Um, this is just a regular one, a regular stealth check. It's not a... Um, not one of your special ones? Not one of the special ones. I have to be standing still for that. So... Uh, stealth. Ooh. Oh, look at that nat 20, nice. 31. All right, cool. <laughs> so yeah, you can move. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you what, with the nat 20, you can move your full speed stealthily. Sweet. Nice. Um, so Absco's going to move there. Is that 30? Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, like 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. That ends up being about 50 ish. Oh, well, uh, then that's way too much. <laughs> for, for, for a double move. For a double move. Oh, for You're a double Coming move. in from the door. Yeah, because you've got, you got your... Well, I guess you've got one action technically. Yeah. But really, I mean, with that thing taking off, they didn't even hear the doors open. And they're all watching the ship take off, kind of making sure they're out of the way. So they I will... Burned by the thrusters. I will totally double move and use that as my surprise. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, Kira. I think... That it is in my best interest to maybe go in a little bit, but stay very, very far away. So, like, maybe go here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So just kind of pop into the door. Yeah. Cool. Nothing too crazy. Phaedra? All righty. Um... Just in case, I would like to draw my longsword. Okay. And, I mean, goblins are never a good sign. All right, so you start approaching toward <coughs> where the goblins and the Isoki are. Angus. I will move here. And we can double move? Yes, you can, because I, I like, and, and this is a bit of a house roll, but when you get a surprise round, I like to give you a, especially in a situation such as this, to give you a full round here. Okay, uh, so real quick, um, Taylor slash Phaedra, did you want to double move because you have that ability? Um, no. Okay. I'm still keeping my distance a little bit. Um. Honestly, more waiting to see if they notice us, because, I mean, we obviously see them. Um, I'm not really worried about them seeing Absco, especially because, like, Absco is off in the corner there, mm -hmm. and Kira's behind us, and we're big and strong, so. Okay. Um, I am going to go towards Photon Attunement, and... Okay. Uh, as I do that, I grab that pink moat that was at my shoulder and I sort of flick out and a giant pink battle axe forms in my hand. And then Alrighty. I am moving right there. Okay. All right. So you just straight up move right up to the Isoki and, and a goblin here. Yes, and I want to say, excuse me, I have some questions. <laughs> and that is when the Soki turns around and sees a giant noir towering over him, holding a glowing pink battle axe. 
He kind of squeaks a little bit <laughs> before <laughs> stepping backwards and yelling for everyone to do something about this. Um, well, you kind of caught him a little flat-footed there, so that's about all he's going to do. Do I get an attack of opportunity when he moves? Uh, five foot step. No, because ah, okay. he didn't really move away. Like you just kind of whoa, okay. kind of stepped back. Now, cool. Here we go. Uh, the goblin over here pulls out this uh little laser thing, right? So looks like a, a kind of a junk. Like it looks like a collection of a bunch of junk put together, and you hear it power up. <laughs> Before he fires at you and totally misses, just ping, it goes flying off the wall. That seems really unstable. You should probably put it down. <laughs> and you just hear, does anyone happen to speak goblin? No. Nope. You just hear, <laughs> all right, Absco. Um, all right, so hmm, I am going to roll stealth for a trick attack. Um, okay, and uh, I'm gonna uh, aim for the um, the Yosoki because they seem to okay. be in charge. Um, so they do, yep. So I roll um, a stealth check, and if it passes what the DC is, I think it's 20 plus their level. Uh, yes, 20 plus the target CR. Okay, yes, CR. Okay. Um, if I beat uh, that, then I get additional uh, damage on them. Okay. So let me roll my stealth attack first to see if it actually matters. Okay. Look at Ooh. <laughs> 31, nice. yeah, that definitely beats 10 plus at CR, or 20 plus at CR. Sweet. I, I don't um, think I'm throwing a CR 11 at you just yet. <laughs> All, right, All right, so now that you have rolled that, uh, you deal 1d4 additional damage with a small arm or melee. Yep. And the target is flat-footed. Nice. So I am attacking with my laser azimuth pistol. Uh, All so. right. Oh. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Yeah. Let me double check and make sure his flat. F I bit doubt his flat foot. It is. Yeah. No. no. That is unfortunate. <laughs> no, unfortunate. Uh, yeah. No, you fire off your your uh, your laser pistol. Just. Pew! And this Isoki is so freaked out by this noir in front of him like he hears the pistol go off and just kind of whips around and your pistol goes flying actually right past angus's head striking the wall behind him <laughs> nice so uh -huh. now we've got another goblin zapperator you see his pile of junk in his hands start to just before he takes a shot at you and his goes flying wide and hit. You can tell these things are not very accurate. <laughs> like, whatever they're using, you're probably more afraid of them being, you know, dangerous in other ways. All right, Kira. All right. I am going to move toward the action here. Just as close as I can get here. Tell you what, let's go ahead and take a quick break. We'll pause it here, and we'll be back and see just how horribly this combat can go. Woo! <laughs> and that's our first episode. Unfortunately, it ended in the middle of combat, but it gives you something to look forward to next time. Um, as we are just starting out, we haven't really refined our intros and outros at this point. So let me just say, I'm Kelric, and you can... Follow me at EQ Points on Twitter, and Miu, our resident game master, can be find at Miu Plays Games on Twitter.
and also on Twitch. Megan is at Dungeons and Meg. Taylor is at Milky Games, that's spelled G A Y M E S. And Punder can be found at Punder Drone, that's D R O N E. We look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.